Okay, welcome back. We are in Lima, Peru again, and today we're going to visit a museum, which sounds really cool to me. It is the Museum of Gold of Peru and Weapons of the World. So if that sounds interesting, come along. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So I found out about this museum and it was a private collection actually of a guy named Miguel Mujica Gallo, who I guess was a Peruvian businessman and a diplomat like a, a, a rich dude, he's a rich dude who collected in a private collection, a huge private collection of like Incan and pre-Incan gold. Actually not Incan. In fact, none of the gold in this collection is Incan. I didn't know this at the time I was making most of this video, but afterwards I was informed of this by a very friendly guide who we met and who you will meet at the end of this video as well. But Anything I say about any of this gold being Incan is wrong. It's all pre-Incan civilizations and textiles and all kinds of artifacts. And in addition to that, also a bunch of weapons, like ancient weapons and historically important weapons. Not just like, oh, I found this old sword, but like, Oh, I found, uh, you know, this Russian Tsar's sword, or, you know, the King of Spain, I found his sword. So, uh, obviously this guy was quite wealthy, um, but I guess uh, in like the 1960s, he created, started this collection, he opened up a museum, and then eventually it was all donated to, uh, to the Peruvian government, and now it's run by a foundation, uh, but either way, it looks really interesting. Apparently down on the bottom floor, there's like all the Incan and pre-Incan artifacts, gold and all that stuff. And then up on the top floor, there's like all the weapons from all over the world, all the famous swords and stuff like that. I don't know, it sounds really interesting. I don't know exactly how much stuff is in there, but apparently it's supposed to be a huge collection. Uh, and it'd be really interesting to see. It's right around the corner here, so uh, I think we should go check it out. All right, so we're here, right around the corner. There it is, El Museo de Oro de Peru. Peruvian Gold Museum. Super cool. So the building, apparently that it's in, you know, it's all walled off and it's like, uh, it's basically like a vault, right? Because, I mean, there's like, apparently, like $10 million worth of gold and valuables and stuff in here. So it's like super, super well guarded. Uh, because of that, I have been told, I'm not gonna be able to actually film in there, but I can take pictures. So we'll take a ton of pictures and uh, we'll see all the interesting stuff in there because man, it sounds, uh, it sounds really interesting. I think we have to pay to get in. I think it's about 30 or 35 soles, which is like eight, ten dollars. Well worth it if this collection is as uh, impressive as I think it is. Okay, I'm inside. Uh, it was 40 soles, which is about, I don't know what, 12, 12 dollars? Not bad, not a bad deal at all. And uh, I asked the guy at the front and he said, we can film in here, we can film video. So. We're going to get to actually film a whole video in here, which is really cool. Fundacion Miguel Mujica Gallo. And that was the guy. That's the guy who had this whole massive collection. Wow. All right. You know what? Let's, let's not waste any time. Let's get in there. Check this thing out. Okay. It's pretty quiet. We're here pretty early. There's not a lot of people, which is good. And uh, we're going to come back up here and see all of this. And we're going to go downstairs to the gold museum part first. 
Turns out there was way too much in this museum to put in one video. So part one will be the gold and pre-Incan artifacts on the ground, on the basement floor, and then on the ground floor, all the weapons will be in part two. So stick around for part two if you want to check that out. But just look around. This is the upstairs museum of weapons of the world. This collection is absolutely packed full, but we're gonna go downstairs first. Avert your eyes. Avert your eyes to all this cool armor and swords and stuff up here because we're gonna come back up and see it. But first, we're gonna squeaky shoe our way down to the gold. It's all these posters. These are actually kind of cool. Old advertising posters and whatnot. Around. Okay. 1985. Very cool. But here we go. All right, we're downstairs. These are like legit vaults. This is like a huge. It's a vault. I mean, we're, we're going into a vault. Okay, I'm gonna warn you ahead of time. The floor is the same floor, same type of floor, the entire way around this museum, which means you're gonna get squeaky shoe for the entire video. So deal with it. Wow. Okay. I, I need to mention again, this is all <laughs> one dude's personal collection that he bought with his own money. So just think about that when we see all of this. This is one dude's collection. Incan idols, Incan knives, chisels. Spindles and waves. All these bronze axe heads, right? So they would fit onto a wooden handle. But these are all made of bronze. These are all stone bludgeons. Boras de piedra. Boras, boras de piedra. I guess they would, yeah, they would put them like that with a wooden handle and then you'd uh, crack someone over the head with it. Either that or it was a tool, I'm not sure. Maybe it was both. It's incredible, some of these are like star shaped. They have some of the textiles, woven textiles in, mixed in with these. Now these are really cool. Copper tweezers, right? Extremely fine tools that you could use for like medical procedures. Doing very fine work, it's pretty cool. Bells. Mirrors, polished stone mirrors. Wow. Corneta de cobre, copper bugle. This looks like some sort of a bludgeon, some sort of a weapon. More, more bludgeons. Some of these are just wood, just like carved, carved wood. Crack someone on the head with it. Some of them have the like a stone head. I guess like with this, if you found, say you found like a piece of wood that had a big knot on the end of it, you know, polish it down, make a good club out of it. These are whistles, oh wow.
I like it's cool that they make a whistle, but they carve it to look like a bird. So it's not just functional, it's very cool as well. Like, it's a piece of art. More textiles, masks. Wow, look at that. Spoons. Oh, look at these little flutes. Made of silver. So, like this, right here, is the reason that the Spanish came here and conquered, ultimately. You know, they didn't sail across the entire ocean, around the continent, didn't try and cross the entire continent to get here, because they had heard stories, basically, of all the gold and the silver. And, well, when you're using silver just to make, like, a little flute, or a trumpet or a spoon. Well, yeah, you get a lot of silver. And they did have a lot of silver. Oh, here we go. There's a sling. Stone mortars, pestles. Anvil, tiny little goldsmith anvil. So when they were making the gold, right, forming it, they would use these as anvils, I guess. That's pretty cool. Now the the word is that the Incan gold work, the work they were doing with gold, was m m like more advanced metallurgy than the Europeans were doing at the time. Some cool ceramics here. And that uh, they were doing things like gold plating, for example, melting down gold and using it to plate other metals, uh, like coat the other metals on the outside with gold. They were doing this, and so were pre-Incan civilizations, but don't forget that none of the gold that's in this museum is actually Incan. It's all pre-Incan, because the Spanish, when they conquered the Incan Empire, they basically took all of the Incan gold back to Spain with them. Something that, like, the Spanish didn't even know how to do at the time when they arrived. So very advanced, advanced metallurgy techniques. Wow, look at these. Projectiles for slings. So you use one of these slings, load up a stone in it. That must have taken a lot of practice to be able to fling one of those things accurately with a sling because they'd use them, you know, for hunting and not just weaponry, like, but like for hunting as well. Stone axes. Wow. All these ax heads and like fishing weights. This collection is gigantic. We're literally like, I don't even know how many rooms there are down here, but I think we're like a quarter of the way around one room. What are these? Ingot molds, oh, okay. So these molds they would use to make ingots. So they would use a copper mold, it looks like, to then make an ingot of I would imagine a more precious metal like gold or silver maybe. Yeah, and some of these molds, like, so you they make a mold out of clay like this and then pour molten metal into it and then it would come out looking like that with like a little, little action figure. <laughs> All the gold is in that room. We're gonna go around this room first though. We're coming back for the gold, I promise. Shovels. Made of copper, it looks like. Farming tools. I don't know what this stuff is, but that. It's like a mummy. I've been told that there are mummies down here. Ooh, these are harpoons. They've got all the little barbs 
pointing backwards. So once you harpoon something with it, the harpoon head stays in. That's really cool. Golden copper discs. So these, I would imagine, were copper but that were gold plated. Because like I mentioned, the Incas were able to plate other types of metal with gold on the outside. And look at these. Some of these are so intricate. Look at like number 27 there. And the one next to it. Wow. So they would have to make a mold. A mold. Wow, look at this one. They'll make a mold and then pour the copper into it. And then they get this. And then they plate it with gold. Wow. Look at these. These like knives with the little decorative head on it. You know, I'd read that basically this, the point of this museum, when Gallo started collecting all this stuff was to preserve, you know, what Incan culture was like and to show like, this is what, when the Spanish arrived, this is what they saw, right? They saw people with these like crazy copper, super intricate, copper discs plated in gold and there's so many of them here right but when you think about it if they're making you know normal things like spoons and and flutes and stuff like that out of silver and gold they must have had a lot of silver and gold which means things like this must have just been like everywhere so we loop back into the rooms with the gold, and as you can tell, I'm doing a voiceover here because the audio got corrupted, but you know what? That's actually a, a benefit because there was another group in here that was um, doing a tour, and they had little screaming children, so the audio wouldn't have been great anyway. Um, as you can tell, the room is gigantic, and this is really just one of the rooms that has gold. and. Um, some really, really amazing stuff in here. The jewelry, the gold jewelry that they had with these like individual, almost like beads made of gold that were inlaid along the jewelry along with like different gemstones, uh, jade and amethyst and emeralds. Uh, it was really, really incredible to see. When we went through here, I spent a lot of time looking at these necklaces just because I was really amazed at um, not just the craftsmanship of it of course like seeing the other things in the museum already I was well aware of the craftsmanship of these civilizations but just the uh, sort of like the uh, abundance that there must have been of gold and precious gemstones to make these these necklaces uh, it was it was really amazing to see going through here all of those and then also just being continuously amazed by the size of the collection and reminding myself that this is really just like one person's personal collection that they sort of um, amassed over the over the decades. It's 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 truly amazing. It, it was it was blowing my mind the entire time. And basically, what you missed out on in the actual audio was just me being like, "Wow, wow, wow, wow! I can't believe this! Wow!" And of course, screaming children in the background. So you didn't really miss much. And as we went through the cases, case by case by case, around the outside of this room, it seems like the, the jewelry and the things that we were seeing just got more and more impressive. That was something that I really noted about this museum. It's one of the things that really stuck with me about this museum, not just here on the bottom floor, but also up on the floor with all the weapons. The collection is so massive, and it seems like every time you look at something and you think, wow, this is so amazing, you move you know, two or three cases over, and there's something that's even more amazing there, you know? 
you see uh, these these necklaces with inlaid um, jade, and you move two cases over, and there's a necklace with like inlaid emeralds. You move two cases over, and there's a they're making like a, a it's not necklaces anymore. Now it's like a mask that's completely made of gold, like a ceremonial mask. It's just really incredible to see all of these things. And of course, we did see these ceremonial masks. Um, further over in different cases. Um, it was very, very interesting to see these things. Of course, at the time, I'm making comments about how like, oh, this is all Inca stuff. It's not. It's pre-Incan stuff, as we learned, you know, at the end um, of our tour here. And of course, the, the gentleman who, uh, the guide who gave us all of that information, unfortunately, we didn't run into him before the video. We ran into him sort of as I was leaving the museum. Very, very nice guy. Um, and you're going to meet him at the end of the video, so definitely stick around. Please stick around and, and see what he has to say because it's very interesting and he knows a lot more about this stuff than I do. But seeing all of this, the, the, the mission of the museum and why all of this was collected, in general, it remains the same. It's to sort of paint a picture of what the cultures looked like here, the civilization here in the Americas when the Spanish arrived. So when I'm saying things in this that, of course, got cut out, of me saying, oh, you know, imagine what it would have been like to be a Spanish conquistador and show up and there's a person who's wearing a mask and like, you know, an entire uh, outfit basically made of gold and gemstones, how amazing that would have been. It, it, it would have been amazing because even though this stuff that's in here is not Incan, it's pre-Incan, the Inca, the Inca had, uh, you know, artifacts like this as well. So when the Spanish did arrive, they would have run into a person, you know, someone who is very... Um, has very high social status, who's wearing like a full, you know, gold mask and, and uh, you know, these, these really, really intricate um, uh, jewelry made from gold and gemstones. So just something to remember that even though this isn't Inca, um, it, is, it is representative of what the civilizations in the Americas were doing before the Spanish arrived. Now the necklaces like this one really, really impressed me because if you look at the little beads on it, each one had to be molded. Um, you know, like I said, they would make a very intricate mold out of clay or some sort of other metal, and then they would pour precious metal into it. So each one of these individual decorative beads had to be molded individually. And then once you've created enough of them, you can string them all together to make a necklace. Truly amazing. This I thought was interesting. You can see how they were doing gold plating on other metals, but this piece is half gold and half silver because, because that was uh, indicative of the religious beliefs of Incan and pre-Incan civilizations of gold representing the sun and silver representing the moon. This one really blew my mind. It's some sort of a decorative, either like a a vessel or a toy of some sort I'm not quite sure but the amount of like absolute crafts intricate craftsmanship that went into this thing I mean look at it just look at the thing it's it's ridiculous and of course I decided to throw in a bad joke about how this is an ancient Incan fire extinguisher I'm sure it wouldn't have landed when, on the original audio and I'm sure it doesn't land now either Seeing some of these uh, these cups and vases that they made out of silver, I'm once again just reminded about the just abundance of silver and gold that they must have had in the Americas uh, when the Spanish arrived. Of course, you know we've mentioned before this is why the Spanish uh, the, their motivation for for conquering and 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 taking over different. Uh, territories in the in the Americas was for gold and silver really and just you can just see from this collection the the abundance that there must have been of these precious metals and of course here this is really interesting these necklaces a lot of them have Christian religious symbols on them crosses they're crucifixes and it's a, just a reminder that uh, it wasn't just like the Spanish showed up, they conquered a civilization, and then that was it. It was just Spanish people living there from then on. There was a, a long history of cohabitation where civilizations existed be, um, uh, 
uh, alongside each other, not just with the Spanish existing alongside um, pre-colonial civilizations and pre-Columbian civilizations, but also like when the Inca would come in and, and, and conquer a civilization, they would basically take from that civilization the things that they felt were useful, integrate them into their own civilization. So there were times when uh, Incan civilization and pre-Incan civilizations were existing alongside each other, sometimes for hundreds of years. And it's one of the things to remember that the Spanish didn't just conquer the Incans on their own. Um, the Spanish came in and allied with other civilizations, usually who had previously been conquered by the Inca, but also because of internal strife within the Incan Empire, right? There were civil wars happening and power struggles happening. The Inca Empire was already severely weakened in the Americas by the time the Spanish showed up. It's important to remember that. And then, of course, here there was some silver work that was post-Columbian, post-colonial uh, silver that was made much later by Spanish silversmiths. And there's a lot of that in the collection as well, gold and silver. So while there is a lot of like pre-Columbian gold and silver here in this collection, there's also a lot of um, Spanish colonial era gold and silver work, which is, is very impressive as well. And once again, just reminds me about how incredibly, incredibly large this collection is. So this is a recreation of a gold wall, but it is all gold and silver and it is all period gold and silver. And apparently this is something that they would do, the Incans, because I was right on this little sign. It says that uh, if you can read it, well, <laughs> if you can read it with the glare, the opposition of gold and silver, a unique attribute of the supreme rulers, symbolizes the power of the two halves of the universe, which is lit by the sun and bathed by the moonlight. Gold was the sun, silver was the moonlight. And in order to show off their power, they would just make a whole wall out of gold and silver. <laughs> that is a flex, if I've ever seen one. Well, apparently there's more, because I'm in this next room. <sighs> we're 100% we're, we're going to run out of battery filming this. I'm not, I'm not joking. We're not going to have enough battery to film this entire thing. Look at this. All right, here's some textile weaving. these incredibly intricate little things, and there's hundreds of them. Look at this. Okay. Now in the middle, there are mummies. Creepy. We're gonna come back and look at the mummies though. We gotta go around the around the outside of this room and see all of this amazing stuff. Look at this silver, these silver plates. Gold, silver, so much. Gold and silver. I don't know what's more impressive. The really, really huge things where you look at it and you think, oh man, they must have had a ton of gold and silver just to be able to make this. Or these tiny, tiny little super intricate, which must have taken so much skill and time and effort to make. Look at 37 and 38. Look at how little those are. Molded out of silver. It's crazy. Looks like it's armor or some sort of ceremonial. Now silver and gold, of course, don't make for good armor. Ooh, look at this scorpion. But, you know, ceremonially, <laughs> look at this, nothing, nothing, 
that's that's a flex right there. You roll up wearing that. Oof. These are copper, but they're some are gold plated, gold and silver plating on copper. Oh, look at this. All woven, then stuffed. Wow, look at this person. That's really cool. Like a little doll. This is up like from northern Peru, it looks like. Oh, got some more mummies or parts. It's a skull, mummified skull with a crown of flowers. Or I mean feathers rather, not flowers. We have a very unhappy child entering at the other end of the gallery. <laughs> that kid is not having it. Okay, we're looking at the mummies now. We're in the mummy part of the video, wow. are very creepy. Okay, here, look at this. So, now you have textiles, right, that are woven with little gold plates woven into them. So you make a poncho, and it's not enough just to make a poncho with incredibly intricate weaving made from, you know, like alpaca and the threads that you had to dye. You had to spin the thread from al alpaca wool and then dye it. No, no, it's not enough. Not enough of a flex. We have to weave gold into it. Oh my God. This is crazy. Look at this thing. This is what I'm saying. Like when the Spanish arrived after four decades, decades going around South America trying to find this mystical land of gold, the kingdom of gold hearing stories about these people that had conquered this whole big area and they, they just had so much gold everything, they made their clothes out of gold you probably heard those stories as like a Spanish conquistador I didn't even fully believe him. How could people make clothing out of gold? <laughs> and then you show up. And there's a guy wearing one of these things. Whew. All right, let's keep moving. We're running out of battery, and we got a whole upstairs hall of weapons to film as well. Oh my god, this thing just keeps on going. Look at this, look at this room. There's another room over there too. We're 100% we're gonna run out of battery. Gee, look at this thing. Wow. This one. Amethyst quartz, opal, gold.
These are wild. These are earrings. Ooh, look at this. That's incredible. Look at that thing. Like inset mosaic with gold on the outside, earrings. I'm just going to make that. Just, you know, hang it off my ear. Whew. These spears. Okay, so these pieces. Now, these I've heard about gloves made entirely of gold. These aren't here. These are on uh, exhibition out in Brazil. But, like, phew. yeah. Spanish probably would have heard stories about someone, like a gold person, a person, a man made entirely of gold. And they would have been. They would have had a mask like that. They would have had gloves that were made out of gold and a tunic that has all this gold woven into it. Probably had gold pants somewhere. <laughs> I don't even know if they're here, but they probably did. Carrying a giant scepter made of gold. Okay, we've come into what I think is the last room in the gold area. Uh, I'm trying to stay ahead of the tour guide here because, I mean, he's giving a tour, which is great, but they're, they're kind of loud. Um, and uh, it's kind of hard for me to, to record while they're, while they're here. So we're going to try and stay ahead of them. We'll come out here. We'll check all this stuff out. And then we'll loop back. We'll see the rest of that room. Whew. A, a vase that represents a human foot with little toenails made out of gold. Oh, oh, look at this guy. I'm, so, I'm not saying anything about that guy. I don't even know if YouTube's going to let me put that on <laughs> in the video. We'll see. We'll put it out there. We'll put it out there. We'll see if the YouTube algorithm uh, or the sensors catch, catch that. Look at these gold cups. It's not just enough to make a gold cup. We're going to make a gold cup with this, like, gold figure attached to it because, you know, it's such a flex. It's, 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 it's really cool. Gold bird bowl bottle. Oh, wow. Look at this vase. Molded gold with little, I don't know, stones, jade or something inset. This bottle. Look at this thing. Crazy. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was looking at that one vase. Turns out there's like 30 more right here. Jeez. Giant vase made out of gold. <laughs> yeah. You're a Spanish conquistador. You show up. Some rich dude just has, you know, a vase in his house with some flowers in it. Entire thing's made out of gold. <laughs> you elbow your buddy. I think we found it. The thing with this collection, a collection that's this extensive, is all of this stuff is really amazing. And there's so much of it that you just sort of, like, at a certain point, you just breeze by it. Oh, like, you know, this thing. We'll just breeze right by that thing. Okay, we're gonna loop back. We'll loop back into the other room now. Little ornaments. A little ornament. You know, just a little trinket made out of gold. No big deal. As a picture of that gold mask, this is also uh, in Brazil, apparently on the exhibit. There must be some big exhibit going on in Brazil where they borrowed a lot of this. But, uh, ooh. Ooh. Look at that. I'm going to zoom in. Because look at how intricate that is. Crazy. 
absolutely crazy. My mind is like completely blown. Look at this gold plated conch shells. Either that or they used a conch shell as a mold to make a gold version of it. Whistling darts made out of gold. Man, did they just have so much gold lying around that they're just gonna make like darts out of it? Look at this thing. Whew. Like I said, I I almost can't like wow look at this. I almost can't like spend too much time with each one of these little things. Otherwise the video would be like three hours long. And we're really gonna run out of battery. I'm not joking about that. Oh here are the gloves. The gold gloves. Making gloves out of gold. Wow. Okay. I'm making the executive decision. We're going upstairs. We're going to go upstairs. I'm going to look at the weapons. We've seen a lot of gold. It's very amazing. Oh, but first, let's look at this thing. Very cool. Okay, that's it. We're going upstairs. Make sure to check in for part two when we check out all the amazing collection of weapons that's on the first floor of the museum. But who is this guy right here? Well, this is the guide who I was telling you about. His name is Ivan Wantanabe. And he is a guide here at the museum. I met him actually on the way out after we had seen all the weapons on the, on the uh, first floor. And I was chatting with him and he's the one who let me know that all of this gold down on, uh, on the basement floor is not Incan. That the Spanish actually took all the Incan gold back to, back to Spain. And so all the stuff that was down here was stuff that was found in uh, burial sites. And it's all pre-Incan civilization gold. And you were saying that this is all pre-Incan. All pre-Incan, yes. So could you explain a little more what the origins were of the artifacts that were in there? Yeah, as you see in Peru, before the Inca, we have many civilizations. And the most important, maybe the north part of my country, Moche or Mochica civilization. All the pieces found inside this period, or inside this museum, excuse me, uh, uh, Miguel Mujica, the owner, he called for the grave robbers. Where, as you see, 60 years ago, no protection in many archaeological sites in my country. So many collectors, you know, could uh, get all these pieces, right? But as you see now, Miguel Mujica passed away, but we, we had the opportunity to see this wonderful Princa ornament and pottery and tapas to belong to Princa civilization. So that is very important because remember, the Spanish took all the Inca world. So all these signs before the Incas. We have in Lima, mainly on the coast. No, or the coast of my country, they built pyramids, north, central, and the south. And what were the names of the civilizations? Oh, well, you may be the, the north, the most important Mochica civilization, and the south, Nazca civilization. Maybe your people hear about the Nazca lines, right? Mm -hmm. So they built pyramids to you, and we found grapes inside the pyramids, right? Uh, in Lima, for example, Pachacama is a very archaeological site, about 16 pyramids, and maybe Two months ago, a colleague from Japan, they found some grapes and with many ornaments, copper, silver, and gold. So Peru history is more than Inca Peru, it's more than years, mm -hmm. 5,000 years old. So. We're completely wrong about everything. This, this is how it goes with all of our videos. We, we go in there all half-cocked and we don't understand what we're talking about and we say a bunch of stuff and, and none of it ends up being right but I mean if you've watched any of our videos then you know this is exactly how things go but luckily we found uh, extremely knowledgeable people like Yvonne over here to explain uh, that we were completely wrong and here Yvonne can give you a little preview of what we're going to see in the next video in part two of the uh, collection of weapons up on the uh, up on the top floor so I'll let Yvonne take it away 
So, so Miguel Miguel Mujica. Mujica he 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 was ambassador to Spain. Ambassador to Spain. He invited the king of Spain and the queen, Juan Carlos and Sofia, uh, his house because inside his house we can see a very interesting uh, trophy collection because he went to many safaris, so with many friends he was a, a, a rich man, so he collects. Uh, many weapons for that reason mm -hmm. because uh, you see many of these weapons represent maybe the universal history for example we can see at the weapons collection the sword of Francisco Pizarro, uh, Lafayette, the, the Queen Elizabeth uh, coronation sword too, mm -hmm. ah, many pistols belong to South American president, yeah. some belong to the Second World War, for example, there are many Nazi weapons. Yeah, I saw American those. Weapons. Yeah. Asia, Africa is a complete collection. Of yeah. You can see the history, not with the weapons, and you can walk around with about seven rooms full of weapons with many history. And maybe I'm impressed to see the samurai collection. Yes, that, that was very impressive. Right? Because maybe you don't know, but my grandfather came from Japan because his really? name is Watanabe. Oh yes, <laughs> Watanabe. Yeah. In 1920, 16,000 Japanese came to Peru. Yes. And my grandfather came to. Well, I hope you enjoyed this explanation, but I invite like to visit the Gold Museum collection. Yeah. It's an amazing collection and it's amazing. It's really an amazing collection and um, come back for part two because what's upstairs is uh, is just equally, equally if not more impressive. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one.